All right, so here is the second part, and we're supposed to write a method called public boolean same crop, and you're given a column. And it's supposed to return true if all the plots in a column are the same type or false otherwise. Um, so, for instance, if you said same crop zero, so this column, then it would be false because there's a mixture. But on the second one, it would say true <coughs> um, because they're all corn. So when you do this one, <coughs> the good news is you already know what column you're in. So you don't have to go through every column. You're just going through uh, the rows in that column. So when you do your for loop, um, the nice thing is you just you know, you already know the column, so I only need one for loop. I don't need the double for loop. And similarly, you're going row is less than, oh, what was that thing called again? Farm plot dot length, and then row plus plus. Okay, so we're doing a for loop to go through here. We're going through each row, and what do we want to do? We want to see if the crop in each row is going to be the same. So probably the first thing I should do is find out what crop type is the very first item in this column. So we're going to say, um, we can say maybe we'll do, uh, what is it, a string? Let's double check. Yeah, the crop type up here. We need this anyway. Get crop type returns a string. So we're going to grab the crop type. That's what we should do first. Okay, we'll go over here. And we'll say um, string current crop uh, equals, and we can just grab the farm plot. Um, bracket uh, zero bracket so I can grab the top one I don't have to like do the the one where um, current crop in column so if I want to know what crop is starting it off in this column I can just say okay I grab the first the top row and the column they ask for and I want the dot get what was that thing again? Um, get crop type. Okay. So what this will do is it'll say, okay, if the first one's corn, it's going to say corn. It just grabs this. Um, that grabs the top one. If it if they ask for column two. Um, it would grab peas. So it's basically grabbing the string for the one you start on. <clears throat> and then you're going to go through the next row down and um, maybe, well, let me think about this for a second. Maybe I want this to actually be outside the for loop because I don't want this to change. They already gave me a column and I'm thinking about it. I want, I already want this whole column to be the same. I don't want to keep changing what my um, current crop type is being checked for. So let me move this above the for loop. Yeah, that's better. Because now they give me a column. I grab the top item and I say current crop. Maybe I should say current crop type we're checking for. Now you can go through the rows and see if they match this right and basically here's the thing if you want it to return true if they're all the same but false otherwise i actually think it's a the best idea in this problem is to set it to return false if it ever finds a mismatch so i would actually say if it ever finds them not equal so i'm going to put um if the current crop type
is ever not equal to, so say dot equals, right? If current crop type dot equals um, the one you're on, which is farm plot uh, bracket row, because it's going to go down each row, and I already have my column from up above. They entered it. Um, so this call stays the same. It's that one. So that, let's say they said column two. It's going to jump from row zero first time through, row one, row two, row three. And it's going to check, um, does the get crop type of this guy equal the crop type I grabbed from the top? So the first one's going to match. I guess I could start at one if I wanted to be fancy although it'll match the first time. But this is actually checking if they ever don't match. See this exclamation point? If you ever got one where they did dot equals and they didn't match, I'm gonna return false. If I go through the whole loop and it never returns false, I wanna return true. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you and why I did the return false with the not version instead, because if you did return true, if they equaled each other, then you could get a bad situation where um, the first two equal each other and it returns true. So you actually want, you want to only detect when it returns false or when they, um, don't match and return false and only if they make it through the entire for loop which is you know it's not that long because you already pick this row or you pick this column let's say i pick this column i already picked this column and the first time it sets the original crop type to peas and then it checks it against peas it's going to be fine i don't want to return true i just want to move on it goes to the second row it says corn they're not equal so it would kick out return false. But let's say they put typed in column one. It originally, up here, it originally sets the current crop type to corn. And then it starts going through my list. Really, I could just make this a one. Why not? And Because I already took care of the zero one. And then it says, okay, now, the, now I'm on row one. And notice here, your row one, column one. So that would be right here. Does this equal corn when it gets the crop type? Yes. It moves on. Does this equal when it gets it? Yes. Does it? Does this equal? And if they all equal, it is passed through this without ever hitting the if. So it won't return false and it'll finish the for loop and then return true. So that's kind of tough, but hopefully, you know, you look at the grading guide and, um, you know, Check if you can scrap out any points. All right. Oh, good times. Talk to you later, people.